So one of the most frequently asked questions to me, especially when we're talking about the Boogaloo, <laughs> is uh, what should my loadout be when it comes to ammunition, magazines, stuff like that? And that's actually a really great conversation. To be honest and upfront with you guys, uh, my answer is, I don't know. That's really up to you guys. I know what I do, and I'll kind of briefly go over what I do, but at the end of the day, it's really kind of up to you and what you think you need. So that's what we're gonna be talking about uh, in this episode. Sound off in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys do, and we can have a conversation about basically what I'm getting ready to say, and also I wanna hear what your loadout is uh, for your rifle and your pistols. How many magazines do you have? How many do you keep loaded? Um, what are some of the reasons why you do that? Those are uh, some of the questions I have for you. I would love to hear what you have to say. So let's get into it. Let's talk about magazines because um, it is something that we should be considering, especially everything that's going on right now with freaking politics and all that jazz. Um, you know, a, a magazine ban may be uh, on the table here soon. So, what do I do? I run seven magazines for every rifle that I have and that would be employed either by myself or a family member. So, the three people in my family that would be running a rifle would be um, myself, my wife, and my son. With that being said, when it comes to my pistols, I run at least three, but uh, really five is what I have. My, my no crap, I need to have X number of magazines loaded. Minimum is three. My max is uh, typically five. Um, when it comes to my Glock, uh, which is the pistol that I would more than likely fight with, uh, I would have one in the pistol itself two on a carrier and two on a belt if I'm fully kitted out <laughs> for the Boogaloo or civil unrest or whatever the case may be. So let's talk about uh, the different types of magazines. Obviously, uh, we have two different types. We have the metal mags and we have the polymer mags. And the reason, the main reason why I'm doing this video is because I reached out to amend two magazines and I wanted to take a look at uh, their AR mags as well as their Glock magazines as well. The reason why is because they're fairly new. I saw that they just started uh, really kind of pushing their Glock magazines and I wanted to stack them up against what they would be like against the Magpul Glock P mags. So we're gonna take a look at those. We're gonna run these magazines pretty much through the end of the year. So I've got a solid three months um, and I may extend that uh, into 2020 as well if I'm either really enjoying it or there's some things that I see that I really wanna check out some more. But let me get into uh, the differences when it comes to uh, metal and polymer mags. Now, when it comes to metal mags, uh, one of the things that I really do like about these is they're extremely durable. Obviously, they're, they're metal, uh, and they are actually thinner than most polymer mags. So, like, what I have on my plate carrier right now is a piece of equipment that I just bought from Amazon. It was something that was going to be cheap and easy to use with my AK mags, uh, but it's actually set up for a double stack AR mag, and it would fit the metal mags really easily, really well. Since they are thinner, uh, you're able to get those in and out a lot easier, which is something I like. But I will say, regardless of what magazine that you do buy, you're gonna wanna make sure that it has an anti-tilt follower on it. So make sure you check that out. The other thing I would say is if you do buy metal mags, I would highly suggest that they, uh, those, those mags are used by uh, DOD or the federal government. They have a NSN attached to that magazine. NSN is a national stock number. That is a, a number that the government uses to um, basically have a part number assigned to a certain item that they purchase from a supplier. So if a metal mag has an NSN, then you know that the DOD is buying that magazine, which means that it is um, good enough for military use, right? So 
Take that however you want it. I like that. It's a little bit of peace of mind just for me, uh, especially with my time in the military and all that jazz. Now, coming to polymer mags, um, the king of polymer mags right now is going to be Magpul. Everybody knows that. Um, I run the Gen 2 or the Mod 2 um, magazines and they've ran flawless. I've ran these for years. Never had a problem. I've never had a feeding issue because of a magazine. Uh, so that's something I've really appreciated from, from Magpul. I actually carried uh, seven of these in Afghanistan uh, and never cleaned them. Never had a problem with them. So that was really super cool as well. The only thing that I don't like about them is uh, when it comes to the body of the magazine is it's not very aggressive. Um, it is more aggressive than the metal magazine, but um, not as much as it could be. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. So what is the difference between the Magpul and the Amend 2? Uh, major differences is going to be the body of the Amend 2 is going to be a lot more aggressive. And that's something I really, really did like. Disassembly is extremely easy, uh, just as easy as the Magpul's. You just depress this number two right here, pull the base plate off and all the guts come out. I would recommend you guys go ahead and clean these on a regular basis, uh, especially if you do a lot of training as well. The other great thing I like about these magazines in comparison to the Magpuls is this high vis red follower. Naturally, again, this is going to be anti-tilt just like Magpul. And uh, that red follower is a really good key for your eye if you just so happen to be looking into the ejection port to see if the magazine's empty or not. So that's really cool there. So pistol mags, uh, they just launched a new line of pistol mags. Right now they're currently only have Glock magazines and they only have Glock, let's see, I believe if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they have Glock 19, Glock 17 and Glock 43. Um, if not, I'll correct that. You'll see that here in just a second. But so far, as far as magazines go for pistols, it is those three. Now, naturally, it has a nice red high-vis follower, um, which is, you know, pretty nice as well. Uh, same rationale there. If you're just so happen to be looking at the ejection port, you can see that pick it up real well. The thing I really like about this one is this base plate. I like the big base plate because it gives me something more to really grab onto and get that finger curled up into it to rip it out of a, of a holster. That's something I really do appreciate. But with this larger base plate, you would think that the Glock 19 mag would be like a plus one or a plus two, and it's not. It's a 15 round magazine. Uh, the other thing that I really like, especially for you guys who may be into competition shooting, especially IDPA, is these witness holes on the back, very reminiscent of the OEM Glock mags, uh, and it's easy to see how many rounds that you have as well. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, this is a Glock 17 mag that they have. And um, yeah, that's pretty cool, but I will say, with these witness holes, you are going to need to clean these a little bit more often than you would with a Magpul PMAG because the Magpul PMAG has a hole right there and that's it. There's no witness holes on the back. So, And then major differences there is the base plate is pretty small, but it does have um, some ridges on it. And that's something I would like to see on the Amen 2s. Maybe get some ridges on there, some beveling. Uh, to create a little bit more friction. That would be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, there we go there. Overall, magazine so far has ran just fine. Uh, I've only put, um, I don't know, maybe 100 rounds through a couple different magazines, doing a lot of uh, one R1, one reload, one drills. And uh, so far, no major issues. But what I will say is here's the Glock 19, here's the Glock 17. Again, everything's the same. Uh, the Glock 17 mag is actually a plus one mag. It runs 18 rounds instead of 17, which is kind of odd because um, it has, you know, big base plate just like this one, but uh, this one's still standard 15 round. I don't get it. Not an engineer, not going to pretend to get it, but like to see that changed. Eh, 
We'll see if it happens. So that is what we've got here with Amend 2. Uh, naturally, if you guys are interested in these, I've got a link to all of this stuff over at fitandfire.com. Please swing by my website to check those out. I'll have a link directly to um, Amend 2, and you guys can check it out. I'll have that on my homepage for you guys to look at. So all you really need to do is click on fitandfire.com, and then on the homepage, they'll be right there, boom. You can, it'll take you right on over. So Amend 2, we'll see how well they run so far at the range. Not that big of a deal. Uh, fed and have done magazine changes just fine. And we'll check them out. If you guys have any experience with Amend 2, sound off in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think of these. Do you think they'll run just as well as mag pools? Are you interested? Uh, do you own them yourself? Let me know. Sound off in the comment section down below. That's really all I got this time. Thanks so much for swinging by. Uh, and we're going to get back to the AKs next week. I wanted to get out to the range to do um, a little bit more range time with a new rifle. So we'll have that next week for you guys. With that being said, Take it easy. Freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Have a great weekend. We'll see you guys later. Bye, y'all.